I get in bed and close my eyes and try to think of nothing. But my nothing gets too busy. I can hear the stars. I am wide awake. I go downstairs to organize the mail. I put magazines and catalogs in one pile, letters and bills in another, and announcements for events like Naked Hamlet on Ice in a third. I go to bed and close my eyes, then realize I'm wrong. I go downstairs and put the letters with the catalogs and magazines. I create a bills only stack and then I make a pile of the pain in the ass art shows I probably should go to just to keep the fucking peace. I go to bed and close my eyes and count the sheep. They look like wolves and drag. They complain about the job. They wake me up. I go downstairs and drink a cup of milk, a quart of beer, a fifth of gin, a two-liter bottle of Listerine, I think it is. It could be Mr. Clean, but I'm not sure. I take several multivitamins made especially for writers. They contain predicates, niacin, samariacin, bebop, rum, strychnine, red dots, opiated adverbs, spam, bar brawl, boners, horse spit, nine volts, and 50 times the amount of salt that's in the sea. I drink a bottle of cough syrup with a label that says, not for human consumption. I go back upstairs to the medicine cabinet, dump out all of the older pills from plastic tubes, and I grind them into powder, then go back downstairs to make a smoothie. I mean, all of them are out of date. What could they possibly do to me? Make me happy, pain-free, energized, and drowsy all at once? I would fucking love that! Because of a piece I saw on Channel 4, I roll up the linoleum and smoke it. Something about the bacteria that breeds in waxy buildup. I light it using the handy pocket blowtorch that's in the Swiss Army knife-like pocket tool I got when I joined ARC when I turned 10. I see angels on the clouds that I exhale. And I notice that the clouds are merely costumes worn by devils. And the devils look like writers. They complain about the job. The pocket tool also has a knife, a fork, a stapler, a dolly, a root cellar, a person to put out there on Linda when you really, really need someone to hear you. Do you know how hard that is in civil conversation? And I simmer and flop and throb and grok my eyes hum. And I wonder, as I'm sure you must wonder, whenever you try to juggle while bungee jumping from a helicopter in a tornado the spitting flaming hail the size of baby fists, I wonder why the hell isn't there a better way to sort the fucking mail. I'm wide awake and realize I'm wrong. I go downstairs and stack the mail according to size. On top, there is a postcard from a wildlife cartel asking me if I receive the ugly address labels. On the bottom are the new issues of slime and how to sedate yourself. In between are letters from writers I don't understand, postcards from artists I cannot decipher, artworks from friends who make me seem sane. I think that I'm wrong, but I don't care. I go outside and stand beneath the moon. It's 3 a.m. No slamming dog or barking door a block away, just quiet and loud and still and fast, like something momentous will happen. The sky might explode. My skin is vibrating. The silence so tight. I hear 666 pins drop. My inner peace is not at peace with anything at all. I do not feel a oneness with the universe. I can barely feel a oneness just with me here below the surface a million miles from heaven. A final rung before you ditch the ladder. All the words and all the books but I realize I'm wrong. I'm wide awake. I go downstairs to sort the mail. Three drawings a day, every day, for 60 years equals 51,100 drawings, about 1,100 more than the required 50,000. You do not have to make three drawings per day. You can make six today and none tomorrow, or nine on a Friday, then take the weekend off. If by the equinox you're within 10 or even 20 of where you should be, you're in good shape. If you stop drawing for a full year, you're going to use up all of those 1,100 extras, all of them, so that the next time you stop drawing for a year, you're going to be stuck with having to draw six drawings per day the following year or 18 on a Friday if you want the weekend off.
Doodles do not count, unless they look like little drawings that aren't doodles. Drawings on envelopes do not count. No drawing before 11 a.m. unless you're up since the night before. A drawing can take no more than 90 minutes to complete, and those that take less than one minute are not real drawings, but if they don't look like a doodle and they're not on an envelope, they can be credited to someone else. Drawings done before the age of 20 and after the age of 80 do not count. Remember, there are no rules, but there are drawings. A lot of my unexamined life was pretty good until I looked in Ruby's doghouse and noticed that she had added shelves to the back wall. And the lower one was stacked to the bottom of the shelf above with acorns, beautiful rocks, my missing slipper, and the dog piece from the 1957 mailman game. A closet can hold more if you use multi-garment hangers, add shelves in back and hooks on the inside door, put shoes and boots on top of the stack shoe and boot boxes on the floor. When you run out of room in the attic, in the basement, in the closet, in the guest room, add additional shelving in the laundry room and boiler room and guest boiler room. Take what you can out of the garage and put it all into a new storage shed. All shovels, weed whackers, scooters, giant candy cane ornaments, and a box of bubble wrap for when you start selling stuff on eBay like you say you're going to do. And things like lawn chairs you don't use anymore, old ladders and old recycling containers the city won't let you throw away, can go under a tarp alongside the house for someone else to toss after you're dead and cremated. And your ashes are put inside an ornate vase that somebody has to keep. I mean, they have to keep it. And you become yet part of the same problem in a way both new and dead. Now you have room in the garage to build a wall-wide stretch of deep shelving into which you can fit dozens of giant plastic tubs full of fossils, unopened model car kits, hundreds of 35 millimeter slide carousels, and jugs and jars full of puddles, collectible soup, and lava. You can probably add an upper shelf or two in the new storage shed, build it its own little attic, and to be funny yet practical, give the new storage shed its own little utility shed. You can slide storage boxes under your bed, under the bed in the guest room, under the couch, under the couch in the guest boiler room, back and under a desk or work table on large storage racks you hang from the beams in your garage. If you have a two-car garage, you can add enough hanging racks to support a collection of 127 antique ventriloquist dummies, hundreds of thousands of seashells, or over 600 board games. I have 50 pre-1960 Chinese checker sets a Parcheesi set endorsed by Gandhi, over 300 TV tie-in board games, a 1957 mailman game that's only missing the dog piece, 15 different editions of Mousetrap, and hundreds of others that no one will ever play again. When being chased by the cat, the puppy doesn't think about how awful it is to chase a firefly. The puppy doesn't think, oh, I wish I knew how to speak cat. The puppy doesn't think this must be some sort of allegory. The puppy only thinks, someday, I'm going to get bigger, make some money chasing squirrels, get a kitten from the shelter, and kill it. Do you have these symptoms? Hair growing in your nose? Knees that don't bend backwards, an itch you cannot scratch, bad thoughts about puddles, misgivings about fossils, a fear of ventriloquist dummies because others make them speak, a desire to open unopened model car kits just to see how much empty room they left in every box. It's not like I collect taxes or personal information or souls or big things like boulders or cars or paddle wheel river boats. Beautiful, historic, endangered paddle wheel river boats. How insane would that be? Though every single one of them could house a modest museum, small, sensible collections. I don't know, motorcycles, pinball machines, vats full of lakes. I agree, that's crazy. Though, you know, just one paddle wheel riverboat would be awfully cool. Bookshelves hold more books if you place books horizontally across the tops of others, sort out smaller paperbacks to place them two rows deep, and on the very top and flush against both sides of any bookshelf, you can stack books up to the ceiling, you'll look smart. 
keep stapled chapbooks together and alternate them staple out then staple in then staple out and you gain an extra inch or two per shelf of chapbooks or enough room for four to ten more depending on page length and how tightly creased they are. You are making things cozier. You have craters to patch. You have space between couches and end tables to insulate. There is room in the crawl space under the stairs. There's room on top of the kitchen cabinets. There's room to the right of the door jam that's under the magazine rack, or at least there used to be. When there's no room left on a bookshelf, you pull out several thin books and slide them between the back of the bookshelf and the wall, and suddenly there's space again to colonize with poems you'll probably never read and never even understand. Fuck the weed whackers and the makers of the fucking storage boxes and the bubble wrap and the makers of couches for the guest boiler room. And fuck the poets who are like antique ventriloquist dummies sitting on the lap of an alphabet on Quaaludes. Sorry, I'm sorry, but every other word used nowadays sounds like fuck. To me, on the news, on the bus, in the mall, on the radio, out of the air raid, marketing sirens, and even fuck my inner fucking voice, it doesn't even whistle anymore. When you add furniture to an empty room, it's like space expanse. You get a coffee table, suddenly you have a room for a couch. A white buffet with glass doors and a storage bench. But if the storage bench you bought at Menards, you cheap son of a bitch, doesn't have a basement or a wine cellar, you have to get creative. Put another shelf in front of the full shelf in the laundry room. Put it on casters if you want to be able to easily move it someday, but I'd skip the damn casters if I were you. Just put another shelf in front of it. The full shelf in the laundry room, and the full shelf in the boiler room, and the full shelf in the guest boiler room. Put another shelf in front of the wall-wide deep shelving unit in the garage, and suddenly you have room for 8,000 more books. If you have a bedroom or living room wall without shelves, you're wasting space. A hallway without shelves is like like a forest without trees, a beach without sand. By adding shelving wherever possible, you are adding space, while completely maintaining the option to drape those shelves with theater curtains for the illusion of even greater space beyond. And why not hang those large storage racks you hang from the beams in your garage from the ceiling of every room? Stack small boxes, five up, five across, and two deep, that's 50 boxes total. Cover them with a piece of masonite, and then the whole shebang with light floral fabric, and you have a TV stand. And just like that shelf in front of another shelf in the laundry and boiler rooms, you can add entire walls of shelves in front of other walls of shelves in the bedroom, in the living room, in the dining room, and in the bedrooms, and in the living rooms of every birdhouse in the birdhouse collection you might just start next week. It's not like I collect bar stools or buses, or parking lots, or counties, or countries, or continents, or planets, or stars. You know, there used to be room for only 244 billion stars in the Milky Way. But thanks to the shelving they added to every jerkwater planet, there is room up there right now for 362 billion stars. That's 118 billion more stars, and things are no less vast. Get some of those large storage racks up there, and the sky, as always, is never the limit. Do you have these symptoms? Wrinkly skin over your elbows, fingernails of different sizes, yawns that come out of nowhere, bad thoughts about board games, misgivings about lava, a fear of books and what might be inside them, a desire to open the vase full of ashes and see if I'm finally asleep. When I look in Ruby's doghouse last night, she added new shelves in front of the old ones, and on the bottom shelf was a bird's nest, several chew toys from the poodle up the street, and a library book about riverboats. The only thing on the top shelf was the skull of a little kitten. Bills and junk mail, the book I read on the plane, A magazine to finish later, luggage, the extra house key our neighbor had, all need to get put away. But right now, as the space between here and there widens, everything, I mean everything right now, is where it needs to be. But where it really needs to be is someplace else. A hot plate, three folding chairs, the nice dishes, leftover hors d'oeuvres, a tablecloth that's 50 years old, all need to get put away. But right now, it's the time between now and then narrows. Everything, I mean everything right now, is where it needs to be, but where it really needs to be is someplace else. The hammer, 
a jar full of nails, electrical tape, a Phillips screwdriver I didn't end up needing after all, but you never know. A power strip for the hors d'oeuvres all need to get put away. But right now it's the will between the what and why mutates everything. I mean everything right now, each and every letter in this remote transit word, this hurdle is where it needs to be. But where it really needs to be is someplace else. Chairs on fire. Piles of unpaid tickets for using the language improperly, or is that incorrectly? Things I wish I could repair. Things I wish I could repair. The albatross on the porch. That poster of reminders for better daily living that's written very poorly by someone who is a better person than I am. I'll need to get put away. But right now is the art between the real and unreal spreads. Everything, I mean everything, right now, each impossibly ragged thought, for which I will need the Phillips screwdriver after all, now and later, there and then, is where it needs to be, but where it really needs to be is someplace else. Coupons from the circular, the burning chairs receipt I'll give to the tax guy, my old Be Here Now t-shirt, which is a funny thing to list, I mean how big is here after all and how long is now? Besides my new t-shirt, Beer Here Now is easier to swallow. A collection of spoons that everyone adds to but no one wants, the laundry basket, a deck of cards, potting soil, those glaciers, things forgotten all need to get put away. But right now, as the knots between fear and faith loosen, everything, I mean everything, right now, stuff for the garage sale, your shadow on the moon is where it needs to be. But where it really needs to be is someplace else.